ever listen to the forecast. <laughs> Supposed to get a shower here at nine o'clock this morning and nothing till this afternoon. Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back on the pigeons on uh, first of the winter rape. Uh, basically what we're doing here today is that is the rape is just literally coming through. The pigeons are feeding on a bit of stubble, you know, there's obviously picking up a bit of seed, bit of like old wheat from the harvest, but they're also just nipping a few um, rape seeds out or rape plants out. So the farmers had a word and of course I said I'd come up here and have a go, see if we can deter them for, for a couple of weeks just to give the rape that chance to get going. Come up when we were to come out of the deeps, out of the deeps, out the deeps there, look. Well, we've been here now for about an hour and we've just had a bit of a rain break which uh, wasn't in the forecast. The one I see this morning was it was going to rain at nine o'clock, ease up, clear up and through till late in the afternoon. But no, they got that wrong, haven't they? And we just sat through an hour of rainstorm. But up until then, uh, pigeons have sort of come across here quite nicely. Uh, might have got 20, 25. Um, it's just uh, stopped raining again now, so hopefully they'll just pick up again and uh, we'll see what we get for the rest of the day. Good boy. Here, yeah, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Here, yeah, Drake! Good boy. Here. Good boy. Here, Drake, here. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. Here. That there, look. This is one of the reasons what, what I don't like pigeons in the wet. They you know, see them bobbles of water sitting on the tail feathers and they know that's not right. That sometimes that will put the pigeons off from coming in. If they're not really hard decoying. Same here, look. You know, it's all water on the tail feathers. You never see a pigeon with water on its tail feathers, like bobbles of water on its tail feathers on its back. And they will see that. Something I don't really like doing, but I think needs must today we're just uh, sat in here a couple of hours shooting probably got 30 pigeons and everything was looking all right and then it suddenly noticed that across the way the flight line had dropped out dropped out completely and they were dropping on a field the other side of a piece of game cover so I took the plunge and take everything down move over there See if we can finish the day off. Come, get up there, come get over, get up, get the back, get the back. 
Get up there. Go on, get up there. Sit down. Rush, rush, rush. Two coming in the front. Two coming. Let's have a look. Where are they coming? Nice. Well, it's all rush and go here. Um, I sat here yesterday and watched the flight line of pigeons. Not a very big flight line of pigeons. Ones and twos coming over the railway line, going over to where we started. And uh, so that's where I looked again this morning and yeah, it seemed that's where the place to be. Well, we've been over there for about two hours and we probably shot, I don't know, 20, 20, 30 over there, which was all right, but then it just stopped, literally just stopped. And then all of a sudden there was masses of pigeons other side of the field. So, something I don't like doing during the day is I've upped sticks, um, brought everything over, chucked a hide together on this track here, looking out in front of us now, on a bit of cultivated ground that's got a little bit of wheat in it. Um, and, well, we've been here literally five minutes and I've probably shot a dozen pigeons already. So, if they keep like that one here, it's coming here. Um, They keep like that for a couple of hours, we might get a reasonable afternoon. So fingers crossed. Good boy, here, Drake, Drake, here, here. Good boy. Good boy. Good 
poikki. Good boy. Good boy. Well, we've been here for an hour and a half, and um, which is not as much time as we spent over there. And pigeons, uh, I don't know where these pigeons have turned up from. I, I honestly believe that they've just, just shipped in here overnight. Um, we're all of a sudden we're seeing, you know, serious numbers of pigeons. Um, I think, I don't know, I've probably got 50, 55, 60 out there already. Been here for about an hour and a half. Constant shooting. Um, killing them as well. Uh, I don't know how long we're going to have before they pack up, but I mean, if it keeps like this for another hour, you know, with what we shot over there in the morning, it could be a nice day today. You know, there's, there's pigeons coming out there now, look. Well, 
I don't really know how to describe this day really because it's uh, it's something that really has come out of the blue. Um, I sat and watched this field yesterday for two hours, two and a half hours. Saw a little bit of a flight line with the odd ones and twos going up it, which is where we set up first thing this morning. Um, and sort of by about midday, we started to notice a build up of pigeons. And by about one o'clock, it was very clear that we were slightly in the wrong place. We had to be the other side of the field, um, down by the railway line, or just off the railway line. And it's just a transformation. Uh, where these pigeons have come from, I don't know. And I can honestly say they must have come here literally overnight this morning because the number that I've seen this afternoon have not been about here most of the summer. Which makes it all fantastic for the pigeon shooter. Well, there we are. Um, that's another very unexpected day's pigeon shooting finished. Um, we started off today uh, just coming down here. I've been watching the flight line yesterday and um, we were doing an article on, on winter rape um, just coming through. It's got a little bit of wheat in it, mixed in it from the harvest time. Pigeons were on it and um, obviously they were eating the wheat but they were also nipping the, uh, nipping the wheat, uh, the rape I mean. So um, for my article in the Sporting Gun, we come down here about first time on the winter rape, which was great, everything was all right. We'd started at 11 o'clock and by about one o'clock, it was very clear that things had took a dramatic change from the day before. Um, so we ended up moving to the other end of the other corner of the field, decoying on a bit of rough cultivated ground um, amongst thousands of pigeons. One of the uh, most striking features about today is the amount of young ones. Um, you know, I would say out of the 100 pigeons I've shot today, 50 plus, if not more, have been young ones. Um, so again, it, it's one of those situations where on earth have they come from, where on earth have they you know, turned up from. And the other one is, is here, this is what I would call round here this year, a normal pigeon, you know, nice grey, dark grey, light blue on the back there. But what we've found today, we've got a lot of pigeons that have got lots of different colour, light colours in their wings. Um, you know, and it, it's just, it, the more I think about it, the more I think that these pigeons have, have migrated in from somewhere, literally in the last 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, um, to have so many pigeons, so many young pigeons, so many pigeons with light, like here, here's a prime example, with light bits in their, light feathers in their wings, in their backs, compared to what I would call a normal pigeon around here. Um, I mean, a good, good quality, good, in good condition. So, but it is just, just something that I can't answer, but it's great.
Fantastic. So we've gone from doing an article for the Sporting Gun to finishing up doing an article or a, a programme for the shooting show where we finished up getting 101 pigeons and one crow. And it's the most unexpected day that I think I've ever had. So, so for me, fantastic. I haven't had a day like this this year. And um, it's just great to get back amongst the pigeons. Hello and welcome to the Game Map of Britain. Today you join me with the team from Newton Rig College near Penrith and today we're going to be shooting some driven grouse. What's amazing about the day today is we've got all of the gamekeeping students here from Newton Rig College and it's all of the team and the lecturers and the students from three years here at Newton Rig College who are going to be putting on this incredible day's grouse shooting for us. So this is an absolute privilege to be with that team and those students, some of which have never set foot on a grouse moor today, shooting some driven grouse. Starting the day in butt six, and there is 10 guns shooting today, so it's quite a long line. As you can see, it's quite foggy, and we don't have that much visibility in front of us. So, the students, the gamekeepers on the Newton Rig uh, gamekeeping courses, they're a good way up in front of us, and they're going to be pushing the birds down the hill towards us. And as Curtis, one of the senior lecturers, has just told us, what's going to be happening is the birds are going to be coming probably down this hill, so there's two or three guns up this way. The rest of my guns are to my left and we're going to be taking hopefully some shots in front like that but also as soon as we've had a shot in front if the birds make a break behind us we can then shoot the birds behind so it's a real exciting day so i'll pick up a bird there looks like the fog's clearing a little this this is this is a perfect little grouse gun because it's so tight and so so compact and so pointable, you can just really wave it around. I, I just love the fact that even the screws have so much detail in them. Beautiful little gun. We must have seen a dozen different short-eared owls on that drive and we've got some great footage of them up in the sky and to see that much wildlife on one of these days is fantastic. We've had all sorts flying past us. There's been a lot of grouse up at the far end, not many grouse where I am, uh, but we did get one or two up in front which is quite nice. With the fog like this, they don't they lose their orientation of things and they don't they can't quite figure out where they're going. So just like that big pack there, they came up the hill, saw the fog, went into the fog, freaked out a little bit, went higher and then went back down again. They sort of lose the bearings completely. There's a lot of flagging going on up there. spending too much time explaining what's happening. The, there's grouse at the top of this hill here and there's a few grouse over there. 
The flankers are still lined out over this way, but the beaters are still about half a mile away and they're slowly but surely, they know there's a lot of grouse there, so they're just slowly but surely pushing ones and twos back over the gun line. This is the prize of the day. This is a, a cock bird, red grouse, beautiful bird. Probably a couple of years old now, as you can see by its wing feathers and feet. But yeah, they're a go gorgeous bird. And that is, I wouldn't say prime eating, a lot of people like the young birds, but for me, take the breasts off, do something with the legs, or pan ro or, or oven roast them. They're an absolutely incredible eating bird. And, and as I said, these are the ones we're after. This is a single cock bird, flew through the line. We knew it was an old bird, it was by itself. These are the best ones to take out, leave the young ones for next year and we'll crack on. Flankers are going to be coming out from those butts, right. sort of up where we've walked. But I just want to make sure they know that where we've stretched to, and then there'll be another one, just more or less on the region to us that further that way. Right. So you like to keep your eyes open. If I see any coming this way, I'll give you a shout anyway. Right. But if you see any coming here, give them plenty of flag because we want to push them down there as far as possible if we can. I'll come just onto the top, just beyond where you are now. Uh, so, if you drop one man off about 80 yards beyond there, right out beyond that far horizon, and then they're going to swing it down and round, and we're going to bring all this ground in below us down over those boats. I've been coming on here since 1984 as a beater, and uh, worked here for nine years, but they used to do this, the whole of this ground here, what we're doing now, plus the one that we did before lunch, all as one drive, and you used to have to push all the top in and all the bottom up and take it through those butts. Uh, the butts that we're going to now, they only used to shoot those one way and I made them so you could shoot them two ways so we can split this big drive in half. Well, these, we used to have to go down the butts and walk all the way out along the wall and right round that back. But I find it a lot easier to line the beaters right across the middle and just swing it round in one. It's quicker, it's easy for the beaters and just as effective. Just come down a little bit on that left. Tony to Sam, I've just stopped uh, the ones uh, to your right that are over the knoll because they can't see the man on the top and they were probably just going to push down a little bit too far. Flag up, flag up! Flag up, flag up! No, you're all right, just keep coming in the middle.
If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.